Hello, welcome back to b -Bot Review. My name's Andy Shaw. Uh, we're drifting off jazz music this week uh, to talk about this video. It's This guy's called Simon Webb. I looked at the comments of people calling him Simon. Somebody else called him Mr. Webb. So I'm assuming his name's Simon Webb. He's put this vid... He's English, this guy, by the way. He's put this video on called The Myth of the Wicked Colonialists. And basically what he's saying is that... Colonial imperialism isn't it wasn't such a bad thing, you know. It's which it just I just can't believe that somebody had put a video on like this. And his arguments are so weak, they're unbelievable. If you look at the comments, I, I actually made a comment against him, but I actually don't think this is enough. I really think I need to make a video against this guy. I just want to say that I'm not I'm not scripted this, I'm just talking straight off top of my head. Right, because I don't want to. I don't want to really was spending much time on this. Uh, it, on jazz, I would do, but not on this. Uh, I actually wrote a comment down here, uh, which I, I think is quite accurate. What I said, uh, the Aztecs emerged about 900 AD, because he says that they were around for 100 years, which is true. Their empire was only around for 100 years, uh, but the actual Aztecs were around for since uh, 900 AD. They arrived in Central America about 1250. They weren't actually. Let me just show you. Okay, so if you look at this map of Central America at the time of the Aztec Empire, you've got the Maya Empire over here. Somebody in one of these comments says that the Maya and the Aztecs never uh, weren't in, in conflict with each other, which is actually untrue because the actual Aztecs control this area here around Guat in Guatemala, what's present-day Guatemala. He does say that. Simon Webb does say that they were, they were in conflict, and is correct, actually, in that uh, respect. Uh, but just looking at this map, the Aztecs are not indigenous to this area. They came down in 900 AD from the north, so they were like American Indians, if you like. They came into this area, and basically uh, they came into Central America, this area here, around 1250 AD. Right, and what they were is they were basically mercenaries. They're just a bunch of thugs, really. They were mercenaries who worked for all the local tribes. Now, this is one of the things I'm saying, what gets me about him. He says that this area, right, the Aztecs and that, uh, were only around for 100 years, as though the whole culture was only around for 100 years. But if you look at this city here, which is called Tenochtitlan, right, which is the Aztec capital, if you go 25 miles north of that, you come to a city called Taltiacan, right? Taltiacan was originated in 200 BC. It's ancient. I mean, to me, that is ancient. Let me just show you a video of Taltiacan. Okay, I've got this video off uh, uh, Microsoft Ancarta. It was just a small video, and what I've just, I've just expanded it up so you can look. But look at this. This is a 300 degree turn around now you tell me if this is a fantastic city for 200 uh, bc i mean look at that look at all that lot watch this avenue here watch it look at that it's amazing i mean when you go to a place like that you're gonna be you're gonna be saying wow aren't you you know what i mean i mean what was what were European cities in 200 BC apart from Rome? You know, England and Spain and that. They were just mud ups, really, weren't they? You know what I mean? So, so looking at this, right, this, the Aztecs came in 1250. They were basically mercenaries working for the other tribes. And what happens? They all got together and they built a, they built a city here. This is what I, I can get. I'm not an expert on, on Central America. This is basically, I've just read about it and look, watched a couple of videos since he put that video on a few days ago, right? And it, did, it didn't take me long to figure out that I didn't agree with what he said. Right, so we've got, we've got the Aztec city here, right? And he's saying that because it's only been around 100 years, they're not a civilization. But the Aztecs absorbed everything from all these civilizations around. They accepted their gods and everything. Every time they, the Aztecs attacked another city, they didn't just destroy the other city's religion. They absorbed it into their into their uh, religion as well. So you can't say that the Aztecs, because they're only around 100 years, weren't a civilization because they accepted everybody else. And I remember their civilization encompasses people who'd been around for like 2,000 years. And they were actually, at this time, they were actually getting into conflict. They were starting to go into conflict with the Mayan Emperor, but Cortes landed and it basically stopped it. The reason why Cortes didn't go into the Mayan Empire is because they didn't have any gold. The Aztecs had gold and he wanted the gold. They didn't go across there, you know, to uh, 
to conquer them and then bring about democracy. You know what I mean? The, it were basically to, to, for the gold initially, and then it, later on they made made all the native Indians slaves. So they, they didn't go across to help them, and uh, and the result was uh, most of the people actually died by smallpox after. So you can't say it was beneficial for the for the Indians, the Spanish going over there. But there's other things that he says, which, which to me just seem to be pure racism. In Partridge's video, he actually says that the Aztecs didn't invent the wheel. They didn't have the wheel, which is untrue. It took me two minutes to dif dispute that. I'll just show you. Right, see this? This is an Aztec toy. What are them on, on sides? Wheels. So I thought, well, if they've got wheels on toys, why didn't they have w put wheels on carts and that to wheel around? Let's have a look. Right, I came up with this. It's it's a website. If you want to find out about uh, the Aztecs or whatever, uh, it's on this one called Aztecs Mex Mexico. There's loads and loads of little articles you can look. It says, we know that the Aztecs were aware of wheels since we see them some of their toys, which I've just showed you. Uh, and then he gives you a reason why they didn't use uh, wheels, basically, because the actual train was too mountainous. It just, it was just, irre you know, I mean, you just, what what they say? Necessity is the mother of all invention. And they didn't have a need for a wheel, right? Because you couldn't get the wheel. They didn't have horses, right, at that time. So they got no animals to actually pull any carts that they made. They had to do them all by hand. And it's all rocky and mountainous, the whole area. It was much easier for them to send stuff around by by boat, weren't it? You know what I mean? Their, their city was in the middle of a lake, right? So they just took everything by boat. So, I mean, when he's saying... They didn't invent anything, you know. They didn't invent the wheel, so they're no good on. They didn't invent doors. You've got to see if they needed it, if there was any necessity for it. If there's a necessity, human beings around the world go for it. You know what I mean? I mean, you look at look at Western uh, civilization. They didn't develop anything really, Europe, until until the industrial area, right? When you got all these people who were actually thinking about things. And some of these things took years. I mean, Harrison, who invented the, the sea uh, watch, which uh, aids in navigation, he was, he was spending over 30 years working on that watch. And he had, he had the time to do it because uh, he was getting funding from the British government, right, to, uh, to look into it. But let's have a look at the Spanish, right? I mean, we get all these really nasty lithographs and things on the Spanish, right? You don't know whether most of them are true. I think in... in I think if you're talking about the Spanish, I think Cortes was kind of like the best of the Spanish, as he wasn't as cruel as the others. But he was still cruel. Uh, and the Aztecs, if you're talking about the Indians, they were definitely the worst of the Indians, right? There's all these stories here about the conquistadors, like, you see, they whipping people, you get this all over. They enslaved 2,000 men, hung women and burnt priests alive in retaliation for 15 European deaths, right? Is this one here? They fed them to dogs. This one here, they burned them alive in their own homes. This one here, they cut off native people's hands. There you can see them cutting off their hands. They devised a way to hang natives and burn them alive simultaneously. They forced native people into slavery and worked them to death. That's true, actually. They did do that. They murdered newborn babies. They spread diseases, that's also true, smallpox mainly. They used native people to test the strength of their swords. They used skull-crushing skull spike weapons during battle. So the, the, the Spanish were pretty nasty as well as the Aztecs, you know what I mean? They're, they're like chalk and cheese, really. I think, I think uh, out of the two of them, though, I think... The way he says, Simon Webb says, that the Aztecs didn't invent anything. Well, I just look at the Spanish, shall we? Right, the Aztecs got most of their technology from the people in the area. They actually went into the Central America and they just absorbed cultures, right? Now, those cultures were ancient cultures, been around 2,000 years plus. I mean, the oldest cultures in, in uh, South America, Central and South America, are 4,000 years old. So they're definitely ancient. So I, I certainly disagree with him. And there were certainly civilizations. He's rubbishing their calendar. I was watching a TV show the other day by Brian Cox, who's a physicist, an English physicist. He was showing you how one of the South American tribes had built these series of hills. And what they did is they told you uh, you could 
basically tell what day of the year it was by looking at the, where the light shines through these hills. And what it did is it helped them with planting crops and things like that, so they could find out, uh, so they could basically interpret it, interpret time. This this program was all about time. And it was, it was showing you how to interpret time. Now, it's interesting how he didn't use a European power to show that. He went to a South American oh, ancient civilization to, to show how human beings predicted the future and, and knew it, when to cr- plant crops and things like that. And this, this series of hills with the sunshine from until you what day, it was over 2,000 years old. It's just unbelievable. And he's rubbishing their calendar. I mean, they, had, they knew the solar calendar. They had two calendars. They, they had like a solar calendar, which, which is what we use today. But they also had one which was uh, shorter. It was mainly a religious calendar for what I can get. Like I say, I'm not an expert on this. It's, I've only just been looking at it this week, this, all this. But let's just have a look at the Spanish. Let's, let's, let's see, see them. Right, how did the Spanish get to South America, right? They came on ships, right? The sails of them ships, from what I, I can tell, came from the Arabs. They didn't, they're not, they didn't invent that type of sail. They came from the Arabs. The compasses that they use, they originate from China, right? Steel, all these steel swords and these steel things, although the actual swords didn't or the, the breastplates didn't, but steel itself originates from Turkey, around 2,000 years, I think it was 2,000 BC when steel was first made in Turkey. That's the oldest place in the world, I think, they, they discovered uh, remnants of steel. So even, th- th- basically, nothing that the Spanish had, which were coming, which got them to the New World, right, actually belonged, <laughs> it was actually originated in Spain. Whereas everything the Aztecs used, they were actually originated in that area. Do you know what I mean? It didn't originate from the Aztecs, but it, the Aztecs absorbed all the other tribes into their areas. So when he's coming out with, they didn't invent the wheel and they didn't invent the door. Well, the Spanish didn't invent a lot of the stuff that they came over in. It was it was taken from all their will. If you look at Spain in context to the world, there's, there's a land border. You can actually go from the land from Spain all the way to China. Now, you couldn't do that in the South Americans. The, the South Americans were very, it was like a big island. Do you know what I mean? You can't just go unless you've actually started building ships and explore. But they weren't at that area yet. You could say that the, the Aztecs were basically at the, the level of the Romans. Do you know what I mean? So he's talking about sacrifice, uh, human sacrifice, which the Aztecs did do. Although he's, he's exaggerating it, he's saying... It went from 20,000 to 250,000, which is completely idiotic as far as I'm concerned. It just doesn't make any sense that. I, I look at a paper. Uh, well, I looked at a few papers. But I looked at this paper. Let me show you. I was looking at this paper uh, by Ray Kirchhoff uh, called Dark Religion, Aztec Perspectives on Human Sacrifice. And basically, you can have a read it, read it yourself. You can download this. I got this from Academia. Uh, so it's a free download. There's actually a lot of stuff on there for free on Aztecs. Uh, and basically he says a, a thousand to ten thousand a year, which makes more sense. Because the Aztecs weren't just killing anybody. You had to be quite, I mean, to, you had to sacrifice the best blood to the gods, you know what I mean? So it was like royalty they were sacrificing and really high up people, so... You know, saying a quarter of a million is going to be dead, that's like sacrificing rubbish to them, you know what I mean? So they didn't do that. Well, this is Professor Ed Barnard uh, of the teaching company. He did a course on Maya and Aztecs, another one on it called Exploring the Mayan World, which really goes into uh, showing you. It's like it's like going on holiday with him, round, speaking to all experts on uh, Mayan culture. It's very good videos. All of them are really good videos. Uh, this is what he's got to say, basically, about Aztecs, okay? Did you know the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan had an opera house and a zoo and even an aquarium? Or were you aware that the Maya hieroglyphic script is one of only five original writing systems on our planet? The advances in science, technology, and art in that part of the world are far greater than most people know. If you listen to what Professor Barnard said there, the the Mayan writing system is one of the original writing systems in the world. Well, the Spanish writing system isn't original. It came from something else, you know what I mean? So in that respect, the Maya are better than the Spanish, you know what I mean? So it's all what he's saying, how he's rubbishing the uh, Central American and South American peoples of that time. 
it's just don't make it just don't stand up when you actually look at it. And if if you've watched these videos by Professor Barnard, it, it, some of the stuff he comes out with, you're thinking it's goddamn amazing. How did they do that? That's what you're thinking. It was like two thousand years ago. A lot of this stuff. You're thinking, how the hell did they do all that? It's just unbelievable. This is another course, uh, TTC course. This is called Conquest of the America. If you listen to the Professor here. The complex civilizations that arose in the Americas, these three high civilizations, were very much like the European empires of the old world. And they went through relatively similar processes of development over thousands of years. These civilizations moved through a series of phases from the development of agriculture to its sophistication to the construction of very powerful, sophisticated, and complex societies. Okay, so this is Professor Marshall C. Irkin of the uh, teaching course Conquest of the Americas. Uh, and as you just heard, he obviously didn't rubbish rubbish the Central American uh, natives either. Okay, so just to finish this off, I just want to say that I completely disagree when he says that there's some kind of blessing that the imperialists went round the world, the con conquerors, the Western conquerors went round the world. In fact, I'd go f even further than that. I'd just say that any kind of uh, imperial colonialism, whether it be from the West, i.e. from all the European powers, I mean, you've only got to look to see how nasty a lot of these people were. Like the Spanish in South America were just plain nasty. You know, the Belgians in the Congo, God, just plain nasty. You know, the Germans in in South uh, South Africa, nasty. The British in India were pretty nasty, not quite. We, we see it as not nasty, but they certainly didn't go in to democratise them. They were, basically went in to exploit the Indians. And look what the, the, the English actually did, the British actually did. The... the took all the opium and started making the Chinese flaming drug addicts so they could get China from them. Do you know what I mean? And then you got the Japanese, who are not even white, they're imperialists, they went into China, and look what murderous things they did. So it's just bad. Oh, any kind of imperialism is just bad. So when he's saying it's not such a bad thing, I just completely disagree. If you look at this picture, the thing that I understand what he's saying, and I, I certainly agree with him with, he's saying that the peoples who were conquered were not these kind of peace-loving, you know, things, Indians, you know, some of them probably were, but there were a lot that damn weren't in all all countries all over the world, you know what I mean? So I, I certainly agree with that aspect he's saying, right? But uh, to actually say that the white people are somehow superior because they had greater technology, which this didn't come from them, it came from the people. I mean, look at this picture here. You've got the Spanish here attacking a load of Indians. They've got a cannon. Now, where does gunpowder come from? It certainly don't come from Spain. It originated from China, didn't it? We all know that. You know, the earliest music came from China. You know, it's just crazy, just rubbishing other cultures because you at that time have got greater technology, which you yourself stole off other people, took off other people. The, the South Americans, remember, are completely isolated. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. They were completely isolated, and they developed everything that you see, they developed themselves, which is actually mar really marvellous, actually, when you think about it. Okay, so that's it. So that's the, my, my conclusion of this is, when you see videos like Simon Webb, or even my videos, I've always said this about my videos, right? I try to make my videos as accurate as possible, I get as much information from as many places as possible, right? But I always say, don't believe everything I say. Look round yourself and see if what I'm saying is true, because everybody can make mistakes. I can make mistakes. I look as many places as did. When I did my video uh, called The Levin Wilson Controversy, I spent years before I actually made that video. I didn't just put something on in five minutes and say this is the truth. So don't believe everything I say. Look at it yourself. I've just showed you some some resources that you can look at. The TTC courses are very, very good, and they're done by professors. I mean, Professor Bardnard is, is an archaeologist who actually works in, in South America and Central America, actually is excavating these things, so he knows as much as anybody in the world, right? Uh, and... Obviously, like I've just said, there's a lot of information which is free on academia where people have wrote papers, you know, for the, like PhD studies and things like that. So there's a lot of uh, good information out there. But, I mean, what did he use? He, he used the Reader's Digest book. You know, he's shown us a Reader's Digest book. I mean, 
You know, if you look at my stuff on bebop, jazz, I mean, I must have about 30 or 40 PhD studies just on bebop jazz that I use as resources. You know, don't, I certainly don't talk about jazz from Reed's Digest book, do I? So that's it. So when you see a video like that, check it, check it up yourself before you actually agree with it, right? And, and do a wide range. Because I'm telling you now, there's no difference between peoples all over the planet. They're all the same, right? They've all started off and gone through some nasty thing to get where they are, some nasty killings and deaths and wars and all sorts to get where they are, right? And they all lie about the cultures. In 1940s America, you got black people saying that white people couldn't play jazz. Now, that's racist, and that's coming from black people, and it can be easily prove that that's not true. In fact, uh, Leonard Feather was a famous writer at that time, he, he actually got some of these people together and he started playing them different records, some white people and some black people. He didn't play the best black people, you know, Charlie Parker, Joel Coltrane and all that. He played normal black people and he played normal white people and they couldn't tell the difference. All these people who said that black people were better than white, they couldn't tell the difference. So, uh, so it's, all, it's a lot of nonsense. Uh, there's a lot of nonsense talked about these indigenous uh, populations. But, but... That doesn't mean to say that the imperialist conquerors were good people, right? Going for the benefit of the heart. They weren't. They were nasty people, I'm telling you. Okay? So that's it. Bye.